Hi, my name is Omer and I'm a landscaper. Many of my clients that request a garden design plan, they intend to build their own garden by themselves. And I imagine that for the majority of them, this is going to be the first real garden that they build. So I've decided to create this guide that hopefully will give them, and you, if you watch my channel, a better understanding about the process of how to establish a garden. I will share with you the main highlights at every stage of the process that you should pay attention to based on my experience of 20 years of establishing gardens and I've summarized it into a 10 steps guide for your convenience. My first and most important piece of advice for a successful garden or any project really is a very obvious one. Just plan before you build. Plan in detail and as accurately as possible according to the circumstances. And of course it is better to hire a professional landscaper but even if you don't have the budget for it, try to sketch your garden on paper as best as you can. Once you have a garden design plan and you know what is planned for each area of the yard, you can start working in this order. The second step you have to take is clearing the site. You should remove any grass or weed from the area. If the plan requires development work, such as pouring concrete or building a stone wall, now is the time to carry out all the dirty construction work. If the soil is hard or compressed where you're about to plant, you should loosen it with a garden fork, or if you can, rent a tiller for a day. It will make your life much easier. At this time, you can add organic matter such as compost to the soil. However, it can also be added later, as seen in this project, where the soil was sandy and very easy to till. As a general rule of thumb, a layer of 4 to 5 cm of compost spread evenly over the surface of the ground and then mix into it is sufficient to improve soil structure, fertility and water holding capacity. But any amount of compost will benefit your garden. For a very poor, heavy or sandy soil you can double the amount of compost. Now is the time to manually level the ground and remove any stones or construction leftovers. To install the lawn and beds edging, check the plan for the dimensions and mark them with stakes and string. If a measurement you need is not specified on the plan, you can find it using a ruler. First, print the plan at a print shop that can print PDF files to scale in large format. Check the drawing scale of the plan. Usually for such projects it will be 1 to 100 or 1 to 50. At 1 to 100, each centimeter on the plan represents 1 meter in the garden. If the scale is 1 to 50, 2 centimeters represent 1 meter. Install the edging for flower beds and lawn. If you are using a rigid plastic edging that comes in a roll, it should be spread out in the sun to warm up and become more pliable before the installation. Install and connect the irrigation system valve box to the water source in the yard. The valve box should be installed in a central location in the garden that can be easily accessed, yet as out of sight as possible. Use a separate line for the irrigation system alongside the house main water supply line. Install the sprinkler system for the lawn. Measure the distances between the sprinklers on the irrigation plan. Then, mark the places in the yard with stakes. Dig trenches for the pipes. Connect all the pipes and sprinkler heads. Test the system to ensure everything is working properly and only then cover everything back. Connect the drip irrigation pipes for the flower beds according to the irrigation plan. Lay out the pipes at the same distance as the spacing between the dripping holes on the pipe to ensure even distribution of water throughout the flower bed. Now you can start planting. Plant the trees and shrubs first. When planting a tree, loosen the soil at the bottom of the planting hole, add some compost and mix it with the soil. 
make sure the top of the root ball is level with the surrounding soil and avoid covering the root collar. Water the tree well after planting. If the tree is not stable, place two or three stakes near the trunk and attach the tree with a soft tie or a tree strap. The tie should be loose enough to allow some movement but tight enough to provide support. If the plan includes a uniform hedge, use a tape measure to mark even spacing for the shrubs. After planting the trees and shrubs, you can plant the herbaceous plants. Scatter all the pots in the garden bed according to the plan. See if there is a need to replace or move some plants based on the actual area. Then plant everything. It is always a good idea to add mulch to planting beds. Although it's not strictly necessary, it greatly improves the appearance of the bed and the quality of the soil and the plants. As it retains soil moisture, regulates soil temperature and suppresses weed growth. You can use organic materials such as wood chips or compost, or you can use an aggregate on landscape fabric as a more permanent solution. Now that most of the garden is ready and there is no longer a need to tread on the lawn area so much, the turf can be laid down. The turf needs to be watered every day and even a few times a day until it roots in the ground, depending on the season and the zone you are in. After laying the turf, fertilize it with a fertilizer for young lawns to stimulate root growth. Sometimes you may also need to incorporate some kind of pest control since young grass attracts a lot of pests. In order to achieve uniform distribution, use a manual spreader. I will add links to the products I use in the description, not sponsored. Now that the garden is prepared and all the plants are planted, water them generously and fertilize them to promote growth. For most plants, a general purpose quick release fertilizer with a 20-20-20 formula will be sufficient. Carefully read the instruction and use the recommended dosage as over fertilizing can harm the plants. Fertilize with 20-20 once a month during the growing season. You can also use granular slow release fertilizers. These release nutrients over a longer period of time providing a steady supply of nutrients to the plants. They can be applied once every few months, but usually are more expensive. Okay, that's it for today. Thank you for watching. And if you want me to create more videos like this, tell me in the comments and I'll do it. See you next time. Peace.